you might as well sing along I know you know it Makes me feel real good when you know my songs My name is Tracy Williams, I'm from the Bay Area from California and I think Salt Lake City has a lot of art scenes out here and I want to be a part of that and so that's my goal. I just want to paint a city. As a kid I, I struggled with words and I was very shy too so art was kind of like an outlet for me where I could kind of just express what I was trying to say, but I couldn't say it in words. There was an experience that I had. It's a memory of my dad. He, he, gave, us, he gave us crayons, he gave us pens, and he let me and my sister draw all over the walls. And my mom got mad. My mom got mad at my dad and said, um, we're renting this house. And his response was, just let them be happy. He was like, just let them. He's like, we can just paint over it. And um, being allowed to do that kind of uh, helped me to kind of think big. It started off with a, a broken crayon um, with a pen that I would find in the street. And I would just uh, draw. Uh, and I would just keep on drawing and keep on practicing. And it was the moment I got confident with drawing on paper, um, I was like, I want to try it on posters. And then once when I got com comfortable with posters, I was like, nah, I want to step it up a notch. Let's let's try it on shirts. And uh, this took time. It didn't really happen overnight. It took years um, and, and several hours of alone time. And it was very quiet, too. So once when I got the artwork on shirts, then it was like, mm, I want to I want to challenge myself a bit more. And I want to try using acrylic paint. But the thing is, I didn't know how to make it. You know, I didn't, I didn't have the resource to do screen printing. So then what I did was I would grab books and I would put the books on top of the shirt to kind of like make it flat. So like, here's the table, here's the shirt. Like I would just lay it out there and I would kneel on the corners of the shirt and I would just get the paint and I would put the paint right here rather than having a palette. And so I, I didn't have uh, paint brushes, so I used Q-tips and I used um, paper plates. And what I would do is I would fold the paper plates in half and then I would just scoop up the paint and just start painting with it. And um, it got to the point where I was able to sell it. You know, this is a really personal story. Um, I remember going to downtown Los Angeles and some of um some of the relatives that I was living with they would make clothes or they would make a blanket um, to make an, a second stream of income and we went to uh, the fashion stores in downtown uh, Los Angeles and we went there early in the morning and we went and digged in the trash cans and grabbed the scraps of material and fabric uh, because we couldn't afford it and we had a friend that said you know like hey it'll all be there you guys can pick it up at six in the morning but i remember taking those drives with relatives when we were driving and i remember looking at the uh public art in downtown los angeles and i remember looking at it thinking like one day that's gonna be me and i remember saying that quietly it was never outside to people it was just a, an idea it was just a thought and I remember stepping into those trash cans and getting out all that fabric and putting it in our old beat up vans. And I remember taking that back with us to relatives houses and sitting with them, taking those fabric pieces apart, um, cutting it, you know, and helping sew. You know, here, here they were, they didn't have the resources, but they had an idea to make a second stream of income for their family. And I looked at that and I was like, they use their hands. They, they used their creativity, you know, out of scraps, out of what they knew, what they had, uh, with what they were given. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I was like, hey, then I'm just going to keep on drawing. I'm going to keep on drawing. I'm going to keep on uh, coloring until something comes out of it. And so that is how it started. Uh, the, the art journey came. It was uh, from that, from humble beginnings, from literally nothing. 
you know, like from digging out of trash cans and stuff. So barriers, um, the first barrier, it starts off with my mind. Um, I think the hardest part was uh, just believing that I was enough. Um, I think it was uh, my own insecurities that was a barrier. Um, but once when I got past that, um, it helped me out as an artist. But not only as an artist, but in other areas too. It's kind of like, ooh, if it feels so good, once when I targeted it. So it was more like, it was my mental barriers. Another barrier would be jealousy. I didn't really expect that because I don't go around and I'm like, oh, I'm jealous of you. You know, it's one of those things I get more inspired. Um, you know, and it's like one of those things where it's just like everybody has their own gifts. You know, everybody has their own gifts. And so I find it very admiring by how people use theirs. Um, I didn't expect that jealousy would be a huge part. Jealousy and envy. Uh, but it comes. It comes with the package. Another barrier is, uh, so it's, um, so yeah, so my own mental barriers and then jealousy and envy. Another barrier is not knowing, not knowing where my next art idea is going to lead me to. That's another barrier. But then also it's a, it's a great opportunity to I looked at people who I admired and I looked at their characteristics. I looked at their healthy routines and I imitated it. So whether it was a teacher, whether it was a singer, I looked at, I just looked at them and I, I was like, okay, hey, I want to be happy like that. And then I would practice it or I want to be hardworking like that. And I would practice it. Music, the artists are kind of like role models for me too. Um, but to me, role models comes in different forms, not just a person. It's a music. It's a music. It's a, it's a it's a letter, a letter that a kind person wrote to me. Um, it's a letter or it's a journal left behind by my dad. Um, those are the type of things or people that I, I there's an attachment there. Um, but I think yeah, role model probably be my oldest sister. My oldest sister, Liz, uh, yeah, she's got the purest heart that I know. And then it would be my mom. I got several aunties and uncles that I look up to, but it's their character, their character that I look at and I try to imitate it so that it can become me. Here's how the process goes. I could sit here and I can look at a book or I can look at a person or I can look at a freaking tree, a tree right there. I can look at those things and immediately there will be an attachment to like, what can we do? With, what can I do with that? The best ideas usually come right before I'm about to fall asleep or at about three or four in the morning. And so what will happen is the idea will come and then I'll write it down. So once when I'm out like in public or something and I see something that like, oh, that can work with this idea, then I'll just go right back to it. As soon as like I start to get things going, I'm like, who can I bring on board so we can carry this out? And then once when I bring that person on board, I'll ask them, I'm like, let's add on your vision to it. And then we just add on to it. Next thing you know, we get a location, set a date, find more people to get involved and who, who can also contribute to it, but also who can be a part of it too. And then what I'll do is I'll write down the things that I can do better and the things I can work on, or I'll write down the names of who I connected with at that event so that they can hop on board too. And we can just keep this going and growing. And then um, also so that I can support them with their events. I would say to uh, create your own. You know, that's what I hope that when people hear uh, of the struggles, because there's uh, there's so many struggles and stuff. Um, but to be honest, um, I think it was just all a part of it. It was all a part of it because it was through the struggling where it was just kind of like, that's where the grit comes in. But in your mind, you got it. You know, so it's kind of like with that vision, it's like protect it. You know, create your own lane, create your own uh, space. You know, it's kind of like, no, you, you deserve, you deserve a seat at the table.
right now it would be the motivational murals uh in the detention centers yeah so i'm going to be involving uh, the youth i want positive affirmations everywhere i want it vibrant and i want it colorful and i want to use the best quality for these kids best quality paint you know best quality like uh spray paint cans everything i just want everything vibrant everything that will help them to feel important loved and beautiful and so that, that's why i want i want it all like splattered everywhere i want to create um a coloring book i'm working on a coloring book right now for um on self-esteem for island girls and so and that book is dedicated to all of my nieces so that's another project that i'm working on another one is um yeah, the final art event at the end of the year before the year ends. Um, but there's other projects and stuff. But I think those are the those are the main ones. The other ones people are just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> Facebook, it's Tracy Cook Hyphenated Williams. Instagram, it's Trace Williams Fifteen.